MIBG can be um, linked to uh, radioactive iodine um, and can be used for either scans or for therapy. Um, MIBG is taken up by neuroblastoma cells and so if you link it with a small amount of radioactive iodine, you can see where ne the neuroblastoma is located um, in the body. So that's when it's used for scans. Um, when it's used for therapy, a much higher dose of radioactive iodine is linked to the MIBG and you actually deliver targeted radiation to the neuroblastoma cells. So the neuroblastoma cells take up the MIBG and the large dose of radioactive iodine kills the neuroblastoma cells. It's actually very well tolerated, probably more well tolerated than other um, cancer therapies that we give. Um, we know that it causes a little bit of nausea and vomiting and um, it can um, cause high blood pressures while you're actually getting it. Um, but then the biggest side effect that you see afterwards are low blood counts, which um, are pretty common for cancer treatments um, and can be easily treated with transfusions. Uh, because MIBG is a radioactive substance, um, it needs to be given um, with a patient inside a lead line room uh, to protect other people from exposure to radiation. Um, it's actually um, pretty easy to give. Um, it's given through an IV um, and it goes in over an hour or so. so while the child's receiving MIBG, um, they need to stay inside the lead line room and they're surrounded by uh, lead line shields. Um, they get the MIBG infusion, like I said, over an hour and um, then they remain in the room for the next few days um, while, the MIB, while the radioactive part of the MIBG is excreted. Um, through their bladder. Once their radiation reaches a safe level, they're allowed to leave the hospital. We really um, rely on parents to help us with the MIBG treatments. Um, so they'll help um, with kind of uh, daily care, um, changing diapers, um, giving medicines, um, feeding, things like that.